Hello, my name is Alfer, and I'm going to be teaching you how to play Terraria. I've been playing the game since 2015, almost a whole decade ago. So I personally believe myself be very knowledgeable about the game. So first I'm going to ask and then answer you a simple question. What is Terraria? Terraria is a sandbox action game, meaning it has an actual goal and storyline, but you can also just do whatever you want. It also has aspects of platformers, meaning games like Super Mario or Sonic the Hedgehog. So now you might be wondering, what is Terraria actually about? I will answer this question for you. In Terraria, you start in a seemingly friendly world that turns out to be crowded with all sorts of monsters and things. And it's your job as player to slay these silly foes, find silly places, complete silly achievements, and build very silly things. Terraria is a pretty complicated game when you first play it, needing to learn how to do anything at all, and I have taken it upon myself to explain this complex start and all the basic functions you can do. To do this, I will first talk about how the game came to be. So the small online creator, Andrew Redigit Sphinx, rec recently having received the gift of a DMCA, basically meaning take this off the internet or we're going to sue the heck out of you. This DMCA being from Nintendo, concerning his previous game, Super Mario Bros. X. Redigit decided to come back from this by making a completely original game of his own. He starts by recru recruiting several sprite artists and the composer Scott Lloyd Shelley to give his game life while he did all the behind-the-scenes coding stuff, working with his newly created team to design his yet-to-be-named game. The game begins gaining traction online, now being referred to as Terraria. Then suddenly, an early build AK, an old version of game, is unofficially leaked, meaning released to public by some non-developer person, who also found an automatically updating version of the game, and asked to be a baiting test beta tester for the game and in turn not releasing this automatically updating version to public. The development team, going by the name ReLogic, said no. A bad choice on their part. This auto-updating build was then released to public and ReLogic stressed to swiftly and, in a fully playable and seemingly complete state, released the game and rendered the old automatically updating build useless. Likely by reformatting the way the updating works so that the old version isn't able to access the information for a new update. They managed to do both of these things successfully, and the rest is lost to time. That is the history of how Terraria came, came to be. Now, let me explain to you how to play this magical experience. So now... Let's start with the most necessary thing to understand, the controls. But before that, let me make a character, I'll name him Timothy. I'll randomize the stuff a few times, and there we go, we got Timothy. We're gonna make him a journey mode character, so I can show off all of the inventory. And create the mushy Timothy. We're gonna make it a small corruption, going on Crimson World. We're gonna take some random stuff in for seed. And we're going to create, and we're going to wait. In the case of the mobile version, the controls are pretty straightforward. This is because they're all on the screen in reasonable locations. Waiting. The movement stick is the D-pad on the far left of the screen. In your case, everything is the other way around, rotated 90 degrees. But yeah, actually, I'll do this. So let me start over. The movement stick is the d-pad on the far left of the screen. This. The jump button is in the top right margin of the d-pad on the right. The cursor selection mode is in the bottom right of the same area. Lock-on, auto-targeting for enemies and such, is in the bottom left of the right stick. Which is for aiming with and using various... The right stick is 
used for aiming with and using various items, the little plus, or in this case, circle button, in the bottom left of the movement stick is for changing whether the right stick aims and uses items, or just aims with items. So these all stars in existence can be used by double tapping and then sometimes holding down the second tap, like this, downward on the movement stick, or up, usually holding, instead of double tapping and then holding. And the item or armor set will tell you which one of these will be used. Usually armor sets are the ones with double tap down special abilities, which also aren't very common. And then wings usually have, well, some wings allow you to fly upward really fast instead of just regular speed by holding up while flying. And some let you hover by just holding down on the movement stick while flying. This set of wings does neither. <laughs> some items, specifically from a certain crossover update with another game called Dungeon Defenders 2, has alternate attacks or uses for items, which can be used by with this button right here in the top of margin of the movement stick. And if it doesn't have an alternate, it just uses the item regularly like this. There you go. Um, the two cursor modes are smart cursor. Let me zoom in. Smart cursor, this little circle, and manual cursor, this little crosshair. The smart cursor selects an empty, no, sex selects a block or empty area based on the location of your crosshair in relation to your character. This is optimal for weapons that have, like bows or magic, or are projectiles, like spears and short swords, and this little weapon I have here, this little pokey thing, is a short sword. The manual cursor is more optimal for the touchscreen abilities and interacting with specific areas on the screen, like placing this block of dirt right there. Don't mind me scrolling. Um, this makes building, usually, and digging, rarely, but still occasionally, easier. The grapple button is this little button in top left margin of the right D-pad. Um, The grapple button is a little trickier on mobile devices than other platforms for a game. Firstly, you need a grappling hook, which you start with on journey mode. You don't need to hold it, you just have to have it. There's a specific equipment slot for it, though. The grappling hook will not actually shoot out until, unless you, like, tap the, like, margins of this. Yeah. You have to Hold on, let me just... Why are you hissing? Are you good? <laughs> there. No more dirt. Want to break from the ads? <laughs> the grappling hook will not actually shoot out until you fully release the button. Allowing you to actually aim in a cir circle. Oops circular area around the player. When you release the button, the grappling hook shoots out until it hits a solid block. You can de-grapple by either tapping up or jumping, or until it reaches its max length, which varies depending on what grappling hook you have, and it gets better throughout the game. Now, the inventory. The hotbar column Basically, the quick access row of your inventory contains 10 slots, columns, as do the other four rows of your inventory. Regular items, as of recently, stack to 9,999, while other items, such as metal bars for some reason, stack to, to smaller amounts, such as 999. And weapons, tools, accessories, armor, and other miscellaneous equipables, such as the grappling hooks, stack to 1, meaning they don't stack. There are other buttons for the inventory that are self-explanatory. Like this little sort button and this quick stack and this tools button, which is like ruler and like block swap, splitting stacks, favoriting items, etc. On the left, besides the inventory, there's the PvP menu. Well, first I should tell you that there's other menus. So there's other inventory menus. <laughs> on the left, besides the inventory, there's PvP, player versus player, which doesn't do much in single player like I'm in right now. Hold on, just Caesar C. I'm just gonna do this, turn spawns off temporarily, turn freeze time on, set it to no noon. There we go. There's the player versus player menu, which doesn't do much with one player. Um, there's the housing menu, which shows all of your NPCs, well, like characters you can buy and sell and like get help from. Your pets, cats, dog, bunny, and friendly slimes, the silly slow guys ever, that are currently alive in your world. Right now I just have Har Harley the guide. 
which is a guide. Butterfly just fell on me. Um, on the right side, there is the crafting menu, which is used for crafting, and includes toggle for duplication menu, which works with the... inventory, and is only existent in journey mode, with journey mode characters also. Journey mode characters can only join journey mode worlds, and only... and journey mode worlds are only accessible by journey mode characters. That's important to mention. Also, journey mode is the only one with this duplication menu. And then besides that, there's the equipment menu, which includes slots for armor, accessory slots, and equipment slots, such as the pet, white pet, which is lone pet. You can have both. The mounts, the, the minecart, type you want, the mounts, and the grappling hook, which I'll just put in there right now. There's also vanity slots for most of these except the pets, and equipment. And then lastly, there's the storage container menu, which only exists on here if you have a storage container open, which I don't. Outside the inventory menus in top right is the, the drop-down for chat menu, which you can use to do silly stuff like this, and also emote. I'm flabbergasted. Uh, <laughs> Includes the toggle for minimap, which is a little, like, rectangular, squarish map in top right that shows a large area nearby your player with your character in center. And then toggle for full map, which shows the whole world as you've seen it so far, which in my case, since I just made this world, is not much. <laughs> These different things are in the order listed. Now, let's talk about the real basics. The gameplay stuff. Firstly, talking about the big necessity, weapons. There's a plethora of different weapons split into four main cla weapon classes, as well as a couple of classless weapons. Quite odd. Um, firstly, there's melee. Swords, spears, maces, you name it. All the stuff you hold in your hand to attack with. You can even utilize yo-yos. These are all pretty easy to use. Some even shoot projectiles as well. Next is range. Bows, guns, launchers, furbles, etc. All of the, well, ranged weapons. Not much I'll say about them, despite how absolutely awesome they are. Next are magic weapons. They can be all kinds of stuff, from magic sticks, to funny lanterns, to musical instruments. You will never know what to expect, so they never get boring to use. Lastly, summoner weapons. More recently, they added whips to direct your silly little minions, and also play an active part in doing the damage. But mainly, they're all sorts of little guys you can summon, and some summoner-specific armor. Most of it, actually. Let's you summon even more of your funky little guys. Ranged and summon are, are, by my, are by far my personal favorites, with magic being a close third. I mainly use melee, though, as do most people. Now that I've told you about weapons, I'll tell you about using them, as well as navigating the world. There are seven biomes on the surface. The forest, where you spawn on a regular world. The desert. Jungle. Tundra, the ocean south of, at the ends of world, and the two evils, the corruption, which is purple, and the crimson, which is red. Only one of the two aforementioned evils exist in a exist naturally in a regular world. Above all this, in the sky is space, which has a lower gravity, sky islands, and harpies. Lots and lots of harpies. The corruption and or crimson could be on either side of the world, or both. It's very dangerous to explore these areas when you're just starting out and completely defenseless to creatures that lie there. Spiders. <laughs> I personally recommend exploring the forest, surface desert, the underground is an entirely different story, and snow biome but not the jungle, as it can be harsh early game like the Corruption and Crimson. Also, on the side of world containing the snow biome, there's a dungeon before the ocean. Do not enter this without first defeating the master the old man there speaks of, this master being a boss that is 
in late game prog progression. But before deciding to enter enter the underworld, which I'll talk about later. Now, using weapons is pretty simple. In the inventory, when tapping on a weapon, it shows a tool tip for a set amount of time, which you can change in settings. This shows stats for the weapon, including how much and what type class of damage it does, and whether it can be used. Uh, it says material, meaning it's a material, to make a better weapon. This also applies to blocks and metals and stuff. Usually, it makes a better weapon. Sometimes it isn't, though that's mainly in mods, which aren't really accessible except on the computer version of the game. You can ask the guide what you can use these things to craft and what else you need to craft these things. Magic and Summoner class use mana, the blue stars adjacent or parallel to your health, the hearts, in the top right. You start with 20 mana, which is one star, same logic applies to hearts, and can increase your mana to a base amount, meaning without any like modifiers from accessories and magic and summoner class armor and potions. Uh, you can increase it to a base max amount of 200 by crafting and using a mana star, which increases your mana by one star, which is 20 mana points, as I'll call them. A mana star is crafted using five fallen stars. Fallen stars fall, who would have thought, from the sky during the night and disappear during the day outside of the inventory and storage containers. You don't need any crafting stations to craft mana stars, you just need five fallen stars. Then there's ammo which consists of arrows, seeds, bullets, fallen stars, gel from slimes, rockets, and other random stuff. In addition to this, the range class has throwables, which were originally their own weapon class and now part of range class because it was pretty much non-existent during the later part of progression through the game's story. Now, let's talk about underground biomes. Underground, there are technically seven biomes. These are the underground, the caverns, which is more of a depth thing than two different biomes. The desert, the jungle, the tundra, and the corruption occasionally, or the crimson always. Also, a very special and recent surprise wise underground past the jungle and before the ocean on the same side as the jungle. And under all of this other stuff at the bottom of the world lies the underworld, or hell, both names are correct in game. All underground biomes lie under their respective surface biomes. Now I have very different recommendations for the underground compared to the surface. These are underground and caverns. All other biomes are far too dangerous for a new and defenseless player. Thankfully, the muggy caves of your world are the perfect place to get defenses. The main ores of Terraria are copper, iron, silver, and gold. From weakest and most common to strongest and rarest in that order. However, there are alternate versions of these that are exactly the same other than whoops, tin, lead, tungsten, and platinum, respectively. All of these different types cost more than one piece of ore to make one bar of metal, the respective vaults costing the same as the regular versions of the ore. Free ore for copper and tin, free for iron and lead, four for silver and tungsten, and four pieces of ore for one gold and platinum bar. You can craft metal bars using furnace, which can be crafted using 20 stone blocks, 4 pieces of wood, and 3 torches. These torches can be crafted using 1 piece of wood and 1 piece of gel, which makes 3 torches per craft. Metal bars can be used to make armor, tools, weapons, 
an anvil, which you can craft at a workbench. And even some other stuff too. Anvils are made of five lead or five iron, which make the respective type of anvil, which is identical. Anvil, the anvils can be crafted at a workbench using five iron or lead bars and can be used for crafting pretty much anything made of metal. You can check the guide to see how much you need, how much of these bars you need for each thing you can craft, the amount of bars needed to craft the previously mentioned items is, I believe, uniform universal for all early game metals. The deeper you go, the stronger the ore. Now, the most optional necessity to play Terraria, building. You can build cramped wood boxes all together for your NPCs and pets, or extravagant mansions in their perverted environments. Building is fun no matter whether you know what you're doing. You can use pretty much anything you find to build, as long as it's placeable. First, I'll tell you about building the basic home that just meets the requirements for an NPC to live inside. Firstly, collect, lot, collect lots of wood from trees and use it to build a 10x6 hollow box with an empty inside of 8x4. Next, create a 1x3 hole in one or both sides for a door or two. Then craft a workbench using 10 pieces of wood, also killing some slimes for gel. Place the workbench, preferably in center of house, and use it to craft three things, however many doors you need, in my case two, however many chairs you want, in my case also two for symmetry, and 32 wooden background walls, four background walls being equal to one piece of wood. Also craft torches, which use one gel and one wood to craft, but you can just do that by hand, you don't need the workbench to do that. Place all of this stuff down where it goes, torches and chairs can go anywhere inside the box, just not outside it, because they won't count towards the requirements. And voila, a beautiful cramped small wooden box for one of your NPCs to live in. However, Terraria worlds are like empty canvases to paint on however you like. A creative environment with everything you need to create whatever you want. The Terraria community has created many beautiful things and it will create many more. But the question arises, how do you create beautiful... Hello there. Um... The question arises, how do you create beautiful things on this canvas? So first, you need to know what to use. Two basic things you need to build in Terraria. Terraforming tools, pickaxe and hammer, and blocks to build with. Now what blocks do you use? I suggest looking on the wiki for different blocks and creating a list of blocks you think would look cool for building. And then creating a list of those blocks, maybe free per bullet point, to check out which ones you think would look cool together. After this, pick one and think about the blocks. What do they remind you of? Then choose a theme that sprouts from this reminiscing and look it up on internet. Terraria, whatever your theme is, builds. Go to images and see what you find, and see how other people work with this theme. Last week, experiment with the parameters you've chosen for yourself. If you don't have access to some of the blocks you chose just set, check out what you do have in the game. Building in Terraria isn't locked behind having access to everything you could possibly use. You just need to know how to use what you already have access to. Here is what I turned my small wooden box into.